So, uh, hello and welcome everyone. So, welcome Anis from Azam and Nova Farahin. Right, so, welcome to our free online lesson. For today's topic that I want to share with you is the Autodesk Process Analysis, uh, which has inside of the Inventor factory layout. Right. So, today we're going to take a look on this Autodesk Process Analysis. So this will be the agenda for today. So let me explain to you first about the process analysis. Right. So for example, if you're designing a factory layout, so most likely, uh, so you also might want to see uh, the, the ways that you can make your uh, factory more productive. Right. So welcome, um, Hakim Mohsin. So I can also but so most likely when you're designing a factory layout, you also might want to uh, think of ways to make your uh, productive design uh, or the machining assemblies uh, more productive. So this is where Autodesk process analysis comes. Uh, uh, so basically this is the process analysis in uh, Inventor. So what you see over here is almost uh, quite similar to uh, flow chart. So what it able to do here is that it able to allow you to analyze the uh, workstations to another workstations. Uh, basically, the whole process of the assembly uh, processes. Right. So, for those who don't know about the process analysis, so the authorized process process analysis is an, an application that can be used to study and optimize the manufacturing process. Right. So by visualizing the process, you can optimize or tweak the performance and identify the potential bottlenecks uh, before creating uh, the factory for, right? So you can simulate uh, to test the alternative factory layouts designed to make your project requirement. All right, so welcome, Joe Chim. Welcome, Abdul Halim. Right, thank you for joining our free online lesson. Right, so continue on. So this will be our agenda for today. So first of all, I will show you the complete process analysis that have been done. So I'm just going to show you the demo uh, on what this process analysis is about. And the second one, we're going to start from the beginning on how to create our own process analysis, such as uh, creating the uh, process setups, uh, creating the process settings, and simulate the uh, process and also creating the charts so that we can analyze our parts of our session. Ah, uh, you might want, uh, right, so before I proceed to the uh, process analysis, so you might also want uh, to know how uh, we can get the process analysis uh, instead of our invented. Uh, so to get the process analysis, it actually come with the uh, with the factory design utilities. Right. So to have the uh, so to have this uh, process analysis, you need to have a uh, product design and manufacturing question because instead of product design and manufacturing question, it has many other uh, tools such as the pro, uh, factory design utilities. So instead of factory design utilities is where the process analysis is uh, you can download it from. Now, uh, let's take a look on Inventor and how we can get the, uh, the process analysis running. So, I, right, so I hope you can see my screen over here. So, first of all, uh, one thing to make sure is that make sure you have this uh, product design and manufacturing question and make sure you also install the factory design utilities instead of inventor. Now, once you install the, uh, the factory design utilities, so to download your process analysis, you can go to the file over here, new and open the standard factory layout assembly over here. And you should be able to see something like this. Right. So, but uh, today we're not going to take a look on the factory layout. We're going to take a look on this process analysis. So, the process analysis button should be up above over here. So, first time you click at this button, uh, at this 
button over here, it will download this process analysis uh, software for you. Right. So once it has a uh, finished download, so you can just click at this item over here, this icon over here, and it will launch the process uh, analysis software. Right. So this process analysis software will also be installed and it has its own icon that has been uh, created shortcut on your desktop. So you don't need to uh, reopen inventory every time. Oh, so this is basically uh, the, the front page of this process analysis. Uh, let me explain to you first on uh, one of the uh, one of these models that I have created, uh, which is using this loading cell over here. Right, so let me open this uh, loading cells. So what we have over here is that a complete created of this process analysis, uh, which will be used for this manufacturing assembly. So uh, what we have here is that this is the work for creating or, or welding uh, uh, a box of cells, right? So we have this raw material over here. So we're going to uh, create the workflow process, right? So this one already created. So we're going to see. So the first one that we have over here is the raw materials that come beforehand. Right? And then it has been inputted inside into the clamping fixtures. So this is basically the process over here until to the end. Right? So after the clamping fixtures, uh, moving forward to the welding cells. So this is basically the weldment uh, work process is actually being done over here. So once the work uh, has been done, has been transferred into the uh, unloading uh, workstation will basically open the welding. And basically this is the end process. Right. So let's take a look on one by one first. So first of all, we have these materials over here, which come, right? So this is what we call as a source file. And then moving forward, this file has been transferred into the first workstation will be used, uh, which is called as a clamp switches, which clamp these three uh, source, file, uh, source, uh, source material together before being transferred to the next uh, workstation, which will be uh, now used to weld these three items together. Uh, so it has been done over here. So once the welding uh, work process has been uh, done, now it has been transfer to the uh, unclamping, uh, unloading clamping uh, of the material. So it's basically open the part after uh, the welding has been done. And basically the end, uh, this is basically the product that we have, which is the uh, VMAX chassis. But basically this is the end product. So what we have here is that it's allow you to simulate the process uh, of each of these workstation over here. So we come from this, source materials over here. So I can click over here and I can rename. So maybe this item over here it has its own uh, name for materials, right? So then uh, all of these trees will be moved into this clamping, right? So basically clamp this tree together. And we, we can take a look on this uh, clamping machine over here. We can see this process settings that we can input from here, right? So you basically uh, what you can do is that you can adjust the setting from this meantime before Earlier, we can also adjust for the meantime to repairs. Right? We can also create the loading parts setups. For example, uh, how many times that this uh, machine required to set up. For example, uh, setuping itself uh, required about 0 0.25 minutes, and the actual processing times is about 0 0.5 minutes. Right? And then we can also input some of other things from here, such as. Uh, this is basically the things that have been input, which is this item number one, two, and three. And this will be the output after this tree has been put together. And this will come as an output as one item. So this one you can set up. So now, so this is basically the clamping. So once the clamping has been done, moving forward to the next one. So we can see over here that it's almost the same, but this one we have basically three. Uh, item over, over here. So basically it run three works before it finally end and be uh, transferred into an out. So we can start to look number one, 
we have our own setups and processing screen time. So there's no setup over here because it's already been set up in the clamping switches. And then item number two, uh, its own processing times and item number three and also processing times, which you can uh, enter the setup or the input uh, differently. Right? So once this one has been created, it will then transfer to the next workstation will be to open the clamping, right? So once the uh, once the uh, opening for the clamping has been uh, open, then will be the end product, which is all the VMHS. So this is basically the end process. Uh, right. So welcome, Muhammad uh, Haikal Karim. Now, right, so since, uh, so let's say we already set up our model. So next thing that we can do, we can uh, start to run this simulation from here. So if I run the simulation, so that's first, okay. So when I run this simulation from here, so I can start, and you can start to see the item has been transferred uh, to our first workstation from here. Uh, so once it has been transferred to the first workstation, you can see it is now running uh, three, three working process over here. So once the three pro uh, working process has been done, only then it will be transferred to the next uh, item over here. Now you can see it's also uh, showing you how many items that has been transferred, how many uh, hours that has been created from here, and the end will be the, uh, the final product, how many item has been uh, welded. So I can hit replay over here, you can hit play and then you can see and the item uh, is being working process over here. Right. So let me reset the item. So another thing that we can set up is that if I go to the settings over here is that I can set up my simulation settings. So whether I want to see the target quantity Right, so to the target quantity, I can uh, go to this end product over here and set on the process over here how many items that I want. Maybe for this entire lines, uh, at the end of the day, I want it to be 100. Right? So I can set up and uh, input the, the number of target, uh, the quantity over here, 100. Or maybe I don't want to, based on the quantity that I want, maybe I just want to see uh, on this duration of run. Example, for example, eight hours. How many items that I can manage to get uh, using this? Uh, basically, this full process. Okay. So on eight item. So I set this one on duration run eight item. So I can rerun this simulation and start to run again. And at the bottom over here, I can adjust the simulation speed so I can slow it down. So basically, it's very slow over here. I can also speed it up and just. Until uh, until it comes to the end, which is the eight hours. So after finishing the eight hours, I can see the final uh, numbers that I get over here is seventy four product. So uh, eight hours only able to create about seventy four, right? So even though that my target quantity is hundred, so of course uh, we need some settings that we need to adjust from this in order to maximize our uh, output. Now, uh, let's take a look at uh, another uh, view. For example, if I go to view setting over here, I can also check on this view line balancing charts. So here we can see clearly what's going on with our process. Now, on the first uh, processor, which is the VMAX client piece, you, you can see the what happened over here is that this green icon over here indicate the processing times. So it spent uh, very little times uh, using uh, it spent oops, it spent very little times doing the works while it spends so many times block not doing any work. Right. So very little times that it works. Very long times not working. Right. So let's see on the next work sessions. So very long times. Uh, works, but very little times uh, blocked, right? And so you can see over here, the reason why, because 
on if I, if you take a look back on this item over here so the clamping itself we'll take a look on the process at times so so it take about so it take about around 0 0.75 uh, minutes uh, so 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.75 minutes to clamp these fixtures but this welding cell over here so we can see 1.5 1.5 and also two over here so about let's say three point uh five so about five about five minutes uh for working so very long right so this one run very fast however this one very slow so that is why uh we can see over here the processing thing the processing time is took very long while this uh clamping itself very uh small time so what you can do is they is that we can readjust our processor so maybe on this process we can see that our welding cell is very slow so we have a bottleneck over here All right so you can see what happened over here is the bottleneck where this one is too fast while the output over here so very slow because these items run uh very slow so all I need to do is that add another welding cell over here to maximize the input. So I'm going to copy this one and paste. All right, so I create another copy. So which means indicates that I add another uh, welding machine. So once this one has been uh, fully used, it will then transfer to the next one. Oops, let me undo that one. It will then transfer to the next welding station second welding session and it will transfer to do it uh, on loading. Now I can reset back my simulation and rerun my simulation. Uh, so by the end of eight hours, I can see that my uh, output quantity is now 170. Uh, so we can also see on our current simulation over here is that now the uh blockade and also the processing times are very poor well, because we have at this uh, uh we have had an additional uh, volume cell over here so that is basically an example on how uh, we can use our uh process analysis to analyze our workstation our factory layout so uh let's take a look on how we can get started to use this how can we uh set up our own uh, process analysis. So uh, let me close this one. So for this case, let's start with new. So I can create new over here. So let's say I'm going to give it a name. Let's say uh, yo yo. So maybe I want to create uh, a yo yo assembly line. Right. So on uh, this view assembly line so first of all we can see on our asset browser over here so this is the uh, process setup that you can improve from here so first of all we have the source uh, which i explained for you uh, to you before which is your source materials or your source items right so we have these processes so this is where the work process is actually been running so whether it's your machines or anything else then we have a buffer buffer basically something like a, a temporary storage right and then we have this product over here. so product is basically the end product uh, for, uh on the on your entire process so let's take a look uh, so let's get uh, let's get started so we start with our source so let's say i want to assemble uh, a yo-yo right so, so first of all, I have uh, one item, so which, which will be the source part, uh, the source item, which be the yo-yo half, half of yo-yo, just on the right, and and then I have this uh, what we call Excel, which is the shaft for the yo-yo. Right. So we have our source. All right. So welcome, Hannah. All right. Then we're going to move forward. To assemble these two together so i have my next workstations uh this one will be assembling the two parts over here the yo-yo uh, right part and also the xr right. 
So let's call this as a uh, fast tunnels assembly. Right, so basically, we want, we want to input some bolts and nuts on the XR and also yo yo. So we want to assemble these two together. All right, so we have done that. And then let's say uh, we already have uh, half of the part of the yo yo, and we want the other half. So let's input another source. And this one will be the yo yo left. And we're going to add another processor over here. This one will be assembly on the entire yo yo. So let's, let's just call this assembly. Uh, before we proceed further, so I want to drag and block first. So these two will be connected to this faster assembly. And the faster assembly will be connected to this assembly over here. And this yo yo uh, will be combined with the fast assembly uh, into this assembly from here. Uh, so let me let me reverse this one, let me fix this one. And I needed to make uh, two operations uh, which will out as one. So we have one over here. Do this one. So one over here, and the other one which will be connected over here. So I can also uh, drag my line to make it more, uh, more clean. Right? Now I believe it looks much better like right here. Okay. So we have yo-yo uh, left and axle going to the fasteners and this will be the output. And the output will be combined together with the yo-yo on the left parts into an assembly over here. And we can see it is now has two operation, but we don't want two operation. We want uh, this both and come out as a one part. So that one we can set up uh, on this over here. So operation sequencing, so I can turn it on. So it will output as one item. So that, so let's say once the assembly has been done, Maybe I needed to, uh, to store this one on temporary shelf. So let's say a buffer. And say the name this one as a shelf. And then I want another process, which is adding the string. Strings, and then the source uh, file, which is the strings. So the string will be added. And let's say, so once the string has been added, I want to transfer this file into the next process, which is the quality control. So add another processor over here and just rename this one as a, say quality control. Then packaging. And oops. And at the end, the end products, let's just call it as a yo yo. Yeah. All right. So once the assembly has been done, transfer to the shelf, shelf transfer to the next position, which is adding the string. So the string comes from this source over here. So first, I'm going to add another uh, versions. In this line over here. So this one as strings also as a one product. So sequence is connected here. Oops. Okay. So this one should be flip. flip this one. This one also flip.
this can go to here and here. Ah, so this is basically our uh, the process sequence. So let's start to uh, adjust the settings. Uh, so basically the first one uh, you see on my process over here. Right. So this one uh, can ignore this one. So let's go to the next one is the fastness, uh, the first uh, assembly process. So let's say this one take about uh, assembling these two, about let's say two minutes. And then once the process has been done, transfer to the next one, it assembles with this yo-yo left over here. So let's say one minute. Transfer to the shelf, okay. And transfer to the strings, add strings to this, this yo-yo. So let's say again one minute or so. Transfer to the quality, quality control. So let's say the quality control takes uh, a little a little longer. Let's say about five minutes. And the packaging take about say three minutes. And this will be our end process. So let's say our targets uh which be around 150. Now, another thing that I must make sure is that on this fastness over here, I can also set the output over here, the action types. So whether I wanted to merge these two together or split these two, uh, this one into two. So for this case, I wanted to merge this one, these two into here. So I set this one as a merge and I can set the output, uh, the color for the output. So let's say the color of the outputs is, let's say, green. Uh, a different shape over here. So when I run, so that just makes a sample. So let me just show you. When I run, so you can see, oops. So you can see this blue, uh, this blue button over here, and it will output as a. Okay, so this let me start. So once I run, this will be the outputs. Right, so it's blocks uh, as a square box. So I can also change the color that I want. So same goes with this one. So this one also merge these two into one. So I'm going to change this into two items. Merging. So okay. Okay. So the processing time for this both. This one will be one also. So that strings, so action type is merge. This one is also merge. So let's say the string also take one minute only. And for the quality, quality control, no branching has been happened because it's only one item. So I just can just set this action, I can action type as none. Uh, but I want the output to be a little bit different. So let's say I put in stars. Uh, let's say red stars. Now we can start to run our simulation. Right, so I want to speed up. So I just over this time speed. So you can see it is take actually about 12 hours just to create 150. So there are some areas that I need to check as well. Now, so let me open my view settings. And here I can see uh, where is the wrong uh, area that I needed to change. For example, I have this quality control. So obviously it takes about five minutes just to run this quality control. So maybe I needed two or three more workstations to control the quality. And also some others area that you can uh, take a look. So uh, let's just keep the fixing this and take a look on some other things that you can do is that first, first of all, we already have our, uh, this graph over here, a simple graph. So if you want more reports, you can also go to the report over here. Let's say view line efficiency summary reports. And you will, then it will send you something like that. So you can analyze the efficiency of your workstations and your assembly processes, but utilization of this uh, process and so uh, we have this uh, cycle times. So for example, if you need to see 
how much time that is required to run for each uh, assembly line. And the end of this, you can also create a summary uh, for this uh, Excel file. Right, so you can extract the data for the summary files. So let's just name this one as yeah, and you will have this Excel files uh, which indicate all the data that has been paid before. Right, so that is basically the thing that I would like to share with you. So if you have any question, you so you can uh, you can uh, type in the chat before we end. So for now, uh, is there anyone that have questions that you'd like to ask about this uh, process analysis? Right, so for those who have missed our uh, earlier sessions, so if you want to uh, review back this uh, webinars from start to the finish of this uh, few long lessons. So you can see back the recording on our YouTube channels or our Facebook page. Uh, I believe uh, I don't have any uh, question from the chat over here. So I believe uh, nobody has any questions. So we can end our session from, uh, for today. So thank you everyone for joining our few long lesson today. And I hope I can see you guys again on our next few lesson. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you.